Good morning, Ridgeline. How's everybody doing today? Good deal. Okay. Well, I say good deal. That was kind of lame. How's everybody doing today? Hey, there we go. Well, my name is Pastor Jake. I lead worship here, and I do take care of the youth students on Wednesday nights. And I just want to say thank you for coming to Ridgeline today. Let's go ahead and stand up. Let's get ready to praise and worship our God this morning. Y'all sing this out with me. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice, tell the same old lies, if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom to save him, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Juice out. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. And we've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. Take her. You feel lost. He's a 
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My feet doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing your love. Amen this morning. It's shame no longer has. Afraid to leave my past behind, and I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing over. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm standing over. My fear doesn't stand.
everyone. My name is Frank Plummer. I uh, just want to take a moment to welcome you here to Ridgeline Church. Thank you for all being here and worshiping the spirit of the living God. So thankful for him and what he means to our lives. Uh, if this is your first time visiting or maybe you've been here before, maybe you want to become a member, maybe you want to join the ministry, or maybe you have some prayer requests. In the seat back in front of you, there is a card. Please take a moment to fill that out. Drop it in the receptacle boxes back by the staircase, and we would love to reach out to you and address any needs you might have. As well, you may have came in today and saw the pictures uh, scrolling across the screen. Those are how we get to know one another. If you don't have your picture up there and would like to have it up there, we would love for you to have it up there. So send your uh, selfie to Ridgeline Alma, selfie at RidgeLineAlma.com, and we would love to get those up there. Uh, also, we are on Facebook, Instagram. You can go to our website at RidgelineAlma.com and keep up with all of the current events that are going on. <sighs> I think it's all I have. Take a moment and just greet one another and tell each other how glad you are to see them this morning. All right, all right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. We're so glad you're here. Good morning, this side. It's all right. Good morning, this side. I'm stuck in the middle again. Good morning. And we're glad you're here this morning. We're so thankful for you guys. I sound a little weird, but I'm all right, okay? So if I just sound a little different this morning, it's just because I am weird. Okay, so, hey, before we get started, there's one announcement I want to talk about. Um, I got a lot to talk about today, but, uh, and I'm, but I'm going to be swift. So pay attention, sit down, strap down, listen up, let's, let's get this thing going. Um, when we first started, and, and I don't want to get into great detail because it's what this is all about, but we had, um, we had these cards, and you can sign them and become a member. Well, we took off like a rocket into space, and uh, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do with all of our members, and we came up with this idea, we were going to have membership dinners, and then COVID hit, and it just, we had them all lined up on the calendar, and then COVID hit, it destroyed everything, we were one of the first churches to start back up, because I'm like, I'm not going to do this, let's just have church, I mean, again, if Walmart can be open, I can be open, amen, so anyway, uh, so we, we, we just took off again, growing and going and just trying to grab a hold of everything and just trying to make sense of all that was going on, uh, still getting more and more members. And so long story short, uh, we finally come to a place to where we're going to start having uh, membership dinners just to say thank you. Now, the thing is, is we have a lot of members now, so the way this is going to work is I don't have all the details, but we're going to start at the end of July. And we're going to go like, I think it's every Thursday, we're going to have a group of people and we're going to meet at the old, at the old church uh, because we haven't sold it yet. We still have it. It's still ours. And we're going to, we're going to meet in the old kids room and we're going to have dinner and just go over, you know, the, the future and uh, the history and just kind of thank you. And we're going to have a really, really good dinner and you will get an invite when it's your turn. And we're going to kind of mix it all up. So if you ain't one of the first ones, don't worry, we're going to get to you this time. That's a guarantee. We're going we're to go this time till we get through the whole cycle of people. So uh, it'll take a while because we're only going to do, I think, like uh, 30 or so people at a time. I'm not sure. I don't have all the details. I'm just trying to put it out there today so you'll start looking for it and being prepared for it. But uh, it's just a way to get you guys together and say thank you for being a part of this thing we call Ridgeline. We just we love you guys and just uh, excited about what's going to be happening there, some of the things we get to talk about, some of the past we've been through, and just getting to know each other a little bit better. And really our dream is, is once we make it through the cycle, to wait a little bit, shuffle it all up, and let you guys meet some more people and do it all over again. So anyway, that's coming. I just wanted to share that with you. There'll be more details as it gets closer, 
but it's just a way for us to get you guys together and say, hey, man, we are so proud to, that you call Ridgeline home. Well, I heard a story <clears throat> of this, um, this old man, this older gentleman, he was laying in bed one day, and he got woken up, he was just woken up, but his wife was in the living room just, just belligerently screaming and screaming, so he went in there, and when he walked in, he noticed there was a couple of open wine bottles laying on the floor in front of her, and she was staring at the TV, just screaming bloody murder. Don't go in there. Do not go in there. Do not go in there, you moron. And she's, he's looking at her like, what in the world is she watching? So he took a few steps forward, and he looked at the TV, and he noticed it was their old wedding video. So... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, so we've been going over this series, and I'm just going to jump off, because today's message, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a long one for me, but let me just tell you guys, as I preach this message today, I just want to start off with this disclaimer. As a pastor, as a pastor, there comes a time when we got to get serious about the battles at hand. I love you. I love God, and I love people. And to me, being a Christian is a true joy. But I'm not going to lie. This message may have kept me up last night because, because the burden in my life is real. Because there's a scripture that talks about how I will be judged at a higher standard because of my position that I hold on this earth. And so I have to make sure that I share what God lays on my heart when he lays it on my heart. And I've struggled with this message for months now. Luke eleven four 4 says, Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's where we're picking up this morning as we finish this series, Pray Like Jesus. We have went up line upon line of the Lord's prayer when his disciples ask him, Lord, teach us to pray. We see that you live a life of prayer. And we broke down this prayer and we seen how powerful of a prayer it was. It was more than just Jesus rattling off of a cutesy prayer. There was absolute authority and power in this prayer that he prayed to his disciples. He was setting the blueprint of how we as Christians are to pray. And this last statement, he says, Lord, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, today's message is powerful. It is powerful. It might make you even squirm a little bit in your chair. It might make you a little uncomfortable, but I believe as Christians, as followers of Christ, there's things that we need to talk about. As Jesus was finishing this prayer, this last statement he made was kind of odd if you really think about it. It was almost as if he was saying, hey, Father God, don't tempt us. Don't lead us into temptation. But we all know that God, he doesn't tempt us with sin. If he did, that would be acting contrary to his holy nature. If God tempted us, it would go against his desires for us to be holy as he is holy. Matter of fact, in 1 Peter 1.16, it says this, Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. God has a desire for you, my friend, to be holy, to be righteous, to be blameless. It would go against all commandments and scriptures that tell us to avoid sin and to flee from temptation if God was trying to tempt us. In James 1.13, it says this. It says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. I don't know why God's doing this to me. Well, he ain't. He ain't doing it to you. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world where the enemy has control. God's not tempting you. Let no one say that, that they're being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But all too often, when we go to the Lord in prayer, we're asking for him to answer our prayers instead of seeking his will. And we got to be careful for that. We got to be careful because if you're not careful with that, my friend, it can lead you down a road that you probably may not want to travel. Listen to me. When you can't recognize the Lord's call over your own desires, then 
it's a good sign you might need to refocus and ask yourself, who am I following? Who am I following? When it's all about getting what you want, when it's all about making you feel good, when it's all about you know, tickling your ears, you might need to back up and ask yourself, man, you know, God hasn't really, he really hasn't like uh, shook me in a while. You might want to ask yourself, then who are you following? Because to follow Christ, it's hard. He says pick up your cross daily. That's not an easy task. Who are you following? John 10, 27 says, my sheep, they listen to my voice. What's that mean? It means they listen to the commands he's saying. Hey, you sheep, go over there. Okay, go over here. Okay, ball. They hear my voice. I know them. I know who you are, and they follow me. They follow me. Some of us are like, God told me to buy an $80,000 SUV on a $15,000 budget. My friend, that's not God. That's having caviar taste with a baloney budget. Amen? I'll just tell you, I'll tell you straight up right now, this guy right here, I ain't got no caviar taste. Me and Shannon one time, a funny story, we, we actually got blessed uh, by some people. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful. How hey, you want to do it? Yeah, I'll take it all day long. But, but we got blessed to go to this bougie restaurant. I mean, this restaurant, I mean, here, we want you to go eat here. And these breadsticks were like this long. And they were as hard as a rock. Like, you be, be careful not to poke your eye out with it. I mean, I don't, they, I don't know what they were for. You couldn't eat them. But they sat on the, the, the middle of the table and you like looked up to these breadsticks. And then the waiter would walk out like this, you know, and he'd put the plate down and it was like a, a, some kind of green sprout, a pea, and a little piece of meat with some glaze on it. And I'm like, what is this, you know? And I, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not a bougie person, I'm a country boy. And so I'm sitting here eating. True story, true story. And so we're sitting there eating and Shannon's like, well, she's just trying to be hopeful, guys. Pray for her. Do you like it? Yeah, my pee's really good. <laughs> and so, so the guy comes out a little bit later, and he's holding this little bitty bowl, and he has these two little fork spoon things. And I kid you not, he walks up to me, and me and Shannon, he says, caviar, compliments of the chef. I'm like, what? Caviar? compliments of the chef I'm like oh you can tell the chef he can have that I don't want it and he broke character and he goes are you serious <laughs> I'm like yeah I don't want none of that stuff you're good man you go get those fish eggs back to him and he left and I'm like Shannon this is cool this is nice and I love being with you but can we go get a burger <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I just, never really struggled never really struggled with that but it's easy to be led astray. So many voices trying to speak into your life today. So many people are trying to tell you this is true, this is true. You better believe this. Don't think that way. Oh, if you think that way, man, you're going to be in big trouble. Oh, society's going to hate you if you think that way. So many voices in a time when people are idolizing other people. My question is, who is leading you? Who is leading you? There's an old saying, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Now listen, I can say that because I'm a quarter percent Cherokee Indian, so if anybody got their fillers hurt, it's okay. I'm Indian. Chi aholo. That means I love you in Cherokee. It's the only word I know. Anyway, but anyway, and it may not be right either. Hope I didn't cuss. <laughs> Maybe I know a few. Okay, anyway, so too many chiefs and not enough Indians but <laughs> here's the deal everybody wants to be a leader but the first thing you need to understand about being a leader is everyone has a leader everyone if you break life down in its most simplest of forms I want to explain it to you you are either following God or something else that's it you're either following God or something else. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 22, you can open up there this morning. I want to read this story. It's about a demon-possessed man that Jesus comes and, and, and miraculously heals. But I want you to listen to their hearts. Matthew 12, 22, it says, And they brought him a demon-possessed man. Now, guys, let me just stop right there. 
We don't talk about this stuff very much anymore. We act like demon possession doesn't happen anymore. We act like the demons are down in hell just, you know, watching, watching sports, kick back, eating Pringles. Man, you are crazy if you believe that. We live in a fallen world. The enemy, like I said a few weeks ago, the greatest thing he's ever done is deceive the world and tricking them to think that he is not relevant and real. So he goes to this demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. That's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He doesn't want you to see God. And he don't want you to talk about God. And Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. When the people seen this, they were astonished. Could this be the son of David? But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, the church of the time, guess what they said? This, it, it, by, only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, this fellow drives out demons. Wow. Now these are the people leading others. These are the church men who, who, would, who would lead others into, into uh, you know, being close to God. And here is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, driving out a demon. And what are they saying? Oh man, this dude's of a demon. Think of that. You don't think that's still happening in our churches today? That's why when I get up here, sometimes it's really hard on me because I'm not going to be that guy. I love you way too much. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons in the name of Beelzebub, by whom do you drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Listen to what he says. Whoever is not with me is against me. Who, my friend, is leading you? Is it God or is it another? Better question, if it's not God, how are they leading you? Satan is called the great deceiver. He is a master at deception. And the Bible talks about one day when the Antichrist comes. On that day, many will be deceived. Many people that sit in church pews will be deceived and follow him. He's not going to come and talk about all the bad things that he wants to do to mankind. He's not going to come and talk about all the ways he wants to destroy humanity. No, nonetheless, he's going to come and just the opposite. He's going to deceive the world by showing them all the good he can do. Matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, it puts it this way. And no wonder Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Think of that. One of Satan's names is Lucifer. Lucifer simply literally means morning star or the light bearer or the illuminated one. My friend, he is a master of deception, but he is the false light. There's only one true light of the world, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? We got to be careful. Unfortunately, many people will get duped. How is this? Simple. It will be It will be evilness disguised as virtue literally a wolf in sheep's clothing and I don't know if you pay attention to what's going on in our world but there seems to be a lot of that going around virtue evilness disguised as virtue unfortunately I know a lot of us in here today many are thinking well it ain't gonna be me Ain't going to be me. I ain't going to get duped. But the sad thing is, that's the same thing that the disciples said. The followers of Christ, those who were at his right hand as he walked the earth. That's the same thing that he said as Jesus said, Hey, tonight, one of you guys are going to betray me before the night's over as he is sitting at the Last Supper. As Judas ran out into the dark. But what else happened? Before he hung on that old rugged cross, Peter denied him three times. His very right hand man. And where were all those disciples on that day, that horrible, wretched day when they nailed our Savior to the cross? They were nowhere to be found. We have to be alert. God's Word warns us that many will fall for the tricks of Satan and believe that he is good. 
And he's already starting to condition mankind for this. It ain't going to be like that. It's a conditioning. There's a scripture in the Song of Solomon. If you know the Song of Solomon, it's kind of a love book uh, about a man and a woman, you know, their passion for each other. But there's a powerful scripture in there that I love to quote. And it's found in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. And it says this, it says, Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that spoil the vineyard, for our vineyard is in blossom. Now, obviously, he's talking about their relationship is in full bloom. They're madly in love with each other. But hey, they got to watch out for these little things that can destroy their relationship. See, it's not always the monumental things. It's not always the big things right in your face. A lot of times it's those little things that chip away at your relationship and can cause you and someone else to have a falling out. It's those little foxes. Listen to me. The devil knows this tactic way too well. He knows it way too well. Why? Because he's been putting little things uh, that go against God in our lives from day one. Little bitty things in an attempt to try to normalize things or to try to desensitize Christians from its destructive power. Like a cute little cuddly fox. It seems so harmless, so innocent. But I tell you what, brother, you let a pack of those things invade your vineyard at night, you're going to wake up the next day grapeless. Why? As harmless as they seem, they're absolutely destructive. It's those little foxes, it's those little things that we allow that can destroy lives. For instance, right now, hold on. Right now, many of us will go home and we'll set our children in front of a television and we'll turn it on and we'll turn it on a channel that just came out and said they want to program your children to think a certain way and they are unashamed and unapologetic about it they're not ashamed they want your kids and I thought to myself what if the church had that same type of conviction? I don't care what this place says. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what society says. I don't care what mainstream media. I don't care what the news says. I'm going after these kids in the name of God. I'm going to show them the love of Christ. I'm going to grab a hold of them and show them the right way to live. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get them in church as hard as, as much as I can to make sure that they're raised in a Christian and godly place and they know what truth is. And I'm not going to be ashamed of it. And I'm not going to be apologetic about it because God has put me on this earth for a short time and I'm going to do the very best I can do to change all the lives I can while I'm here on this earth. What if that was us, church? <laughs> what company? Disney. No condemnation. I've been there. I've watched the movies. I, <laughs> big fan. I'll be the first to tell you. I'm not coming at you from way up here looking down on you browbeating you I'm coming from a place where God's grabbed a hold of my heart crushed it stomped on it crushed it again and said go after these people sure there's other companies but this company drew a line in the sand and it said we want your kids we want to brainwash them I don't care what you believe it's what they said I've watched the interviews so if they want your kids, the enemy wants your kids, my question is, where are they wanting to lead them? Where are they wanting to lead you? You know, a lot of pastors don't like talking about this stuff. They just want to come and talk about how good God is. And let me tell you, man, God is awesome. I thank God for his grace, his Holy Spirit that works in our life. Thank God that we can come to a place where we can lift up the name of Jesus and we can glorify God and we can be excited about what God is doing because he is still alive working God and he's still doing things today in our lives. Thank God for that. But no one wants to ever come and talk about how evil or deceptive Satan is. Disney, LGBTQ movement, is one that's very dangerous and I want to talk about it for just a minute it isn't anything new it isn't anything new 
and many of us have family and friends that have been affected by it. Let me start off by saying again that God has put a burden on my heart to love people. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you struggle with. God has put a burden in my heart to love people. That's why I'm a friendly guy. Guys, if I had my way, I would live out in the middle of Chester in the mountains and be a hermit. That's my true nature. To just disappear and be pretty, I mean, I pretty much look like a Sasquatch anyway. That's where I grew up. I'm very backwoods. I'm very country. But I don't do that because that's not the call that God's got on my life. He has a burden in my life for people to just love them where they're at. In the next part of this message, I come to you, I come across as, as that of Paul, where I would say, when it comes to being sinners, I'm chief. I'm chief, man. I got my own issues. I got my own struggles. I got my own iniquities. I'm not coming at, a, at you at, at a point of arrival or, or uh, you know, I'm better than you, nana nana boo boo. I'm simply coming at you to tell you that we need to be awake to some of the stuff that's going on in our country and in our world because it's real. The movement is destructive. Why? Because Satan, from the very first time we see him, is in the garden doing what Satan does, trying to convince someone to be something other than what God intended them to to be just eat the fruit just eat. all you got to do is take a bite you'll be just like god just build a tower big and tall and eventually you'll reach heaven and you will be a god jesus come up to this high place with me jesus he tempted jesus he tried to trick jesus Come up here, look at all this world that God created. Look at all this world. All you've got to do, Jesus, is bow down to me. And this will all, you'll be the ruler of this place. You get it? He's constantly trying to make people something that they were never intended by God to be. And how deep does it go? How, how powerful is he? How about this? How about this? Um, what about Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah? You ever heard of those guys? Well, the thing is, is we don't call them that. Even though that's their God-given powerful name. What do we call them? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're fallen Babylonian names. The one that Satan gave them. The one that the enemy, our Bible even says it. Hey, here's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, it ain't. That's how deep this stuff goes, guys. He is a master at trying to make people something that they are not. See a pattern? He's all about confusion. Confusion. I want to introduce you to someone today. Chris, if you bring that picture up real quick. Look at that guy. You may not know who that is. Maybe you do. If you don't know who it is, you can go down to the Arkansas State Capitol, walk on their land and on, the, on the front yard, and you'll see a, a little image of him. This is Baphomet. This is a demonic being entity from the occult from the satanic occult now baphomet is all about gender confusion and biological confusion now if you ask an occultist they're going to say oh no it's all about tranquility it's all about balance and it's all about it's all about equal equality my friend that's a lie that's a lie from satan why because they're satanist it's all about gender identification. It's all about gender confusion and biological confusion. Look, his head and feet are that of a goat, and his body is that of a human. He has female breasts and he has male genitalia. Satan's mission, if you get one thing today, listen to me. Satan's mission is always about destroying mankind's image of being created in the image of God. Regardless of how you feel. Regardless of who you know, this movement has demonic origins and it deals with the oppression of beautiful souls. And organizations around the world are trying to make it normal. Christians, we need to be careful what we allow in our homes and who we follow.
You know, <clears throat> why Disney? A few months ago, and like I said, I'm not just hating on Disney. I'm just telling you what the truth is. So before you turn on the TV, you might want to pray about things every now and then. A few months ago, there's a governor in Florida named Ron DeSantis. You may like him, you may hate him. I don't, it don't matter to me. I'm not a super political person. I could care less. I think he's sure he's a good guy, I guess. But he instated, he invoked a, a, a law basically stating that teachers, you know, the people who are supposed to teach your kids how to write, how to read, how to do arithmetic, that up to third grade in the state of Florida, it was against the law to talk about gender identification or sexual orientation. Third graders. Fourth grade, go for it, I guess. But he was trying to protect the least of these as the Bible tells us to do. And Disney attacked him because of it, full force. So he went back, and it got into this political tug-of-war. But think of that. They were upset at this governor for saying, up to third grade, I don't want you to discuss with these little kids about sexual orientation or gender identification. It's off the table. And Disney attacked him for it. Guys, I was still playing with G.I. Joe in the sixth grade. I didn't have my first girlfriend until 10th grade. I had to tie a pork chop around my neck just to get one. Her name was Fifi. But this is no place for that. But yet they went all out war against this guy. And so he just fought back. It's time that we as parents and we as leaders of the church we begin to take a stand and we begin to say hey you know what that doesn't line up with God so I'm just not going to support that let's teach our kids not don't teach them in ignorance don't teach them about what news says or science says or what society says don't even teach them what you think dig in Open up God's Word. Get resources. See where the true origin of some of this stuff comes from. And train your children up in the ways of the Lord so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Why? Because they are grounded in it. Look, God, He is a wonder-working God. And He can change the hearts of many. I'm not asking you to be keyboard warriors where you get on the Facebook or the Instagram and you blurt out your stinking word vomit and, you know, your hate speech. It's nothing about that. We don't need any more keyboard warriors. What we need is men and women who love God and love people and who are willing to have a calm conversation and be ready for them to reject it. What do you say when they reject it? Okay, but I still love you. I still love you. The Bible says that if you, know, if you study, that you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It'll fr set you free from all the lies and bondages of this world, all the tricks of the enemy. Your eyes will be open to all the deception he is trying to pull over our eyes and it's hard on us because we've been brought up that way we've been programmed to think that way if it's been in our life since we were little it's almost normal to us and so this kind of goes against the grain but my friend the time is coming where we can't handle this no more we can't we can't settle for this anymore the church has to rise up and take a stand and say this is who we are and we're not ashamed of it and we're unapologetic and yet we love you anyway. As the band comes up here this morning, I believe there's a time coming pretty soon. I don't know the day nor the hour. I'm not even going to pretend. But I believe there's a time coming where God is about to separate the seed from the shaft. I believe that he's about to call this church up to do something pretty amazing. And I want to make sure that this church stands in truth no matter how hard it is.
you would stand all over this place this morning. Next week, we're going to start a series on spring break or summer break, so be a little bit more funner. But guys, if you don't go, no one will. If you don't stand, no one will. If you don't preach, no one will. If you don't share, no one will. If you don't love, no one will. Because you are the ones who hold the key to the true light, Jesus. The world thinks they got it figured out, but it's that false light of Satan that has got them in this duped state of trickery. And it's not easy being a Christian. Sometimes we got to go against the popular grain. But one day, let me just tell you, a hundred years from now, all this stuff that we worry about ain't going to matter. What's going to matter is the decisions we make right here and now and the souls that we change for eternity. That's it. Ford F-150s, big houses, boats to go to the lake. Rust and moth's going to eat all that stuff, especially Chevy's. But what's going to be important is the lives that we touch and change right here, right now, in these moments. And you're the church. You're his people. And he hasn't called a better group of people that I can see than Ridgeline Church right here and right now. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning and just ask that he would just put a burden in our heart for people. And maybe, maybe you're here today and maybe you just need prayer for something else. It's okay. Come on up here because, man, he, he don't just get stuck on one thing. He's a wonder-working God. He can answer all of our prayers simultaneously. He don't have to, like, wait for this one to be done and that one to be done like we do. You see me and Shannon going back and forth. God is that God that can do it instantly. So let's just ask God for his blessing right now. Lord, Lord, as we leave here today, God, I pray, Lord, you just put a burden in our heart as we close this series, Lord. And we just understand, Lord, how how deep the deception of Satan can be in the lives of those around us. And God, even though that may be, Lord, you still called us to love people, to, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. you say. It's on, our, it's on our building outside, so let us be that church. As we go out to the world, we truly live by that. Now, what does that mean, that we give in to everything they say? No, we stand our ground, but when we don't see eye to eye, we still choose to love. But God, give us a passion to be courageous in our walk with you, in our faith, in our Christianity, God. Let us be unapologetic and unashamed of who we are in the name of Jesus. Let us stand for truth. Let us be bold in our faith and help us to be the men and women that you, God, have called us to be. And God, if there's anyone today who needs prayer for anything, God, whether it's that or medical or financial, whatever it is, marriage, maybe you're just struggling with something, God, I want you to know, Lord, that we know that you're an answering God that you answer those prayers. So Lord, right now, Lord, as we come to you, God, we simply ask if there's anyone out there today that needs the Lord, that needs some prayer, God, that they know that these altars are open and we'd love to pray with them, God. God, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being so powerful. And thank you for coming alive in our lives and leading, guiding, and directing us to be the men and women that you want us to be, God, in this crazy time. If you're out there today and you need prayer, I want you to come up here when I get off this stage and get some prayer because he will answer. It's in Jesus' mighty name we ask these things. And everybody said, amen. amen. These altars are open. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested in my life the end. Ash was redeemed 
seemed only beauty remains And my orphan heart was given a name And my morning grew quiet, and my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Sing this out this morning Oh, your grace so washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your
to say. If you're, <laughs> if you're sitting there this morning, and there's something you need to deal with, and you're nervous or you're scared, or you don't want to go up in front of a crowd of people, don't let that be what keeps you from God's love. Don't let that be what keeps you from God's grace this morning. Because that grace is so free. We live in such a messed up world. And there's no reason that what other people think or what we think about ourselves should keep us from what God has for us. So we're going to sing that chorus one more time. And if you would, if you need to move or if you need prayer, if you need to just get something off your chest or come to Jesus, move. Don't sit there and wait. Don't miss this opportunity. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over me. You have made me new now, life begins with you. It's your next week. Make it your anthem to love your neighbors, to care for them. Don't have to side with them. That's the mistake of the church. We just got to love them and stand on God's truth. Let's be that church. Today we're going to say a prayer. We're going to ask God to bless our offering this morning. Thank you for those who give into the kingdom to help us to continue to to speak bold truth from the pulpit. Thank all of you who give to help us keep the lights on. And we're also going to, as we're praying, I'm going to pray for our, our kiddos. They're about to go out of, to camp Monday. They're going to head out to camp. So we're just going to pray for our leaders and, and our kiddos there. They have a great time, and God really grabs a hold of some of them. So if you would, just join me in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you, Lord. And I just pray, God, first of all, you bless both the gift and the giver today, Lord. As we use it to advance your kingdom to speak about your truth, what you would have us do and who have us be, and to share the good news of the gospel with all those who encounter people from Ridgeline. God, thank you for allowing people to sow into your kingdom and just continue to keep this thing moving forward like a runaway train, God. We wouldn't have it any other way. And God, right now, also pray for our, our, our staff and our kids that are going to camp. God, may your hand be upon them this week. May you move in a mighty and powerful way. May the Holy Spirit just come and flood their life. And may they find the peace and the grace of God that can only come from you, Lord Jesus. God, we love you and we thank you for that, Lord. Let them have a great time and a lot of memories and stories as they return, Lord. Keep them safe. And it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Tell you, it's, a, it's enough to battle our own pride, to battle our own lust, to battle everything. But to know that you have an angel or someone masquerading as an angel of light wanting to destroy you, aren't you thankful that we have God who watches over us and loves us so much? Thank you, Jimmy, for that. That was a great message. Um, 
Uh, I do have a little bit of bad news, uh, followed up with a little bit of good news. The bad news is today's event up at Naturals Game has been canceled as a formal church event. The, the leader of that group was not able to make it. And so, it, but the good news is, is we're all still going. So uh, if you want to go, you have your tickets, you purchased them, they're out um, at the welcome desk. If you want to go and you did not purchase a ticket, we have some available for $8 a piece, I believe. So check with the person at the welcome desk, they'll be able to help you with that. Also, as well, there will not be any service July the 13th or the uh, 20th due to camp. Uh, so no service this Wednesday night or next Wednesday night. And as well, um, speaking of camping ministries, the next outing uh, is for the uh, camping ministry. Let me say that again. How do I differentiate that? Okay, it's not the children's camp. It's not it's those who go camping in the campers. That camping ministry, uh, that is going to be going on this weekend, or no, I'm sorry, the 22nd through the 24th, which is like two weekends away. Uh, if you want to go, I think they're going to Chicken Creek, and you can get with David or Shanda, or Chandra, Chanda, that's it, yeah, and they'll be able to help you with that, get a reservation set up and any questions you might have. You guys have a great week. It was great to worship with you this week.